Hello everyone, this is Caitlin and today we are making a 1930s cotton dress. Let's get started on this dress. So we have this um, print, it's from the old Starbridge Village, um, one of the reproduction pieces, and so it's really lovely, swirly pattern. We're going to tie out the skirt, I think. So I'm going to even this out first, let's try that. I need three panels to the skirt. And for my height, I like to make them around 45 inches long. Here's the bodice. I'm using a pattern that a friend drafted on me. So, whatever I'm using today, I'm going to add a little bit, make it a little bit wider neckline. Still, still, you know, circular, but just a little bit more open. Looking at the original, I kind of like it. I'm just gonna make it pretty plain. I have here the sleeves that I cut just full bishops. I want the wrist to be slightly less full, so I think I'm just gonna cut it like here. There's a very similar shaped sleeve in the work on one side. I actually didn't feel like drafting, so I choose my regular bishop sleeve pattern and cut some of it down. So, that is all cut. I need to cut some lining for the fashion fabric, or at least the bodice, and we can start sewing. Sewing up the side seams. Now I have a facing to put on. I'm just using brown cotton. It's the same brown cotton I'm using for the lining. I'm just going to iron that up. That way I can start sewing on the other end. Alright, I am working on sewing together the bodice. So the skirt is completely done. I did the gauging, uh, finished the facing. So it is ready for bodice whenever we get the bodice done. So that's what I'm working on now. Just doing a little back stitch. It's actually coming together rather nicely. It doesn't take as long as people think it does to hand sew dresses. And I got that skirt done in two evenings. But you know, it does take a little bit longer than machine sewing, of course, but it's not it doesn't take months or weeks. Not even doing it just for a couple hours a night. It wouldn't take you for you a month. I'm doing it just a couple hours a night and this is day three and it'll take me probably yeah, a couple more nights of sewing and this should be done. Sewing like maybe three hours a night. So it doesn't take as long as people think it does. All right, I have tried on the dress and uh, fitted the darts, so I'm ready to sew them in. I sewed one in, and I'm working on the other one. And there's usually only one dart at this time period, so that's what we're doing. Again, you know, using a back stitch because it's more secure. All right, now we have piping to finish. And I'm just using a running stitch, and it's not a very nice running stitch either, because honestly, it doesn't matter. We're about to sew this at least another one more time and in some areas too because like the underarm piping is going to get sewn twice into the arm's eye once with the running stitch and once with the back stitch and then the neckline and waistline piping only gets sewn one more time but it's again with a back stitch so I don't particularly care about making this part nice and neat make sure my dart facing the back because that's where darts usually face in originals so that's what we're going to do 
Just remember what side I sewed all these seams to. Okay, I sewed them to the back. Alright, we're good. Just gonna make sure it's all, you know, looks good. I think so I'm going to put in the hooks and eyes before I do that. Really I should have done it before I pinned the um, piping in, but yeah, I guess we'll start now. Let me figure out how far apart I want these hooks and eyes. Just gonna put one pretty close to the top here. I don't know why I have a measuring tape. I'm not going to use it. One. Wait a second. Why am I putting piping here? There's a waistband. Okay, take that out. I even had the waistband here the whole time. I was staring at it. Still didn't remember. Alright, let's do two inches of an overlap. Which means I needed to add two inches to the piping. All right, we'll put on piping on that later. We're going to continue working with hooks and eyes. Glad I thought about that. All right, fold that in half. Ow! Stab myself. Put hook and eye right there. All right, there's at least all the eyes marked. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm okay with that. All right, I have not finished all the hooks and eyes, but I did want to show y'all part of the doing the piping. Uh, I'm gonna be filming. I'm gonna be sewing tomorrow, but I won't have any time to film. So I wanted to make sure y'all saw the steps, even though I don't get to finish them. So this is gonna get sewn on with the back stitch. So with the waistband, I won't have a nice row of stitching on to help me, you know, keep this straight. So I'll actually have to manage that part on my own. Alright. So that'd be the hooks and eyes. Let's see anything else that I need to show. While we're here, we might as well go ahead and put this um, cuff on the sleeve. I am going to have to add buttons and buttonholes to this. Even out all the gathers, best I can anyway. And this in. Now I get to back stitch all across that, and probably just going to use the rest of this gathering thread, which went somewhere. Oh yeah, this one that um, pulled out. This is long enough to actually go, you know, through there. So I'm going to do that too, and then we'll come back and finish the cuff and do whatever else we need to on the bottom to guess put piping on the bottom because I'm going to need to do that and do the second hat step for the piping on the neckline. Put in sleeves and we'll be finishing up this pretty quickly. Alright, so finishing up the piping on the neckline. Sort of. So I am just working on putting in piping actually. This is the waistband, so we put on the waistband and now I'm putting on piping for the waistband. There's the back stitch. I also put in two hooks and eyes on this waistband. I really shouldn't have done them there. I should have done them over here because the waistband on the other side, you know, goes over this. So it's like we're doing like four hooks and eyes, we're going to do them here and then do some here. Which is just more work for me, I guess. Turn this under. Slip that in. Alright. Now I get to, now I get to sew all this. Lots more piping. And I just changed needles, so I got a very sharp needle now. The only problem with a very sharp needle is I you know, it hurts more when you, you know, poke your fingers, so. But I am doing a back stitch. Not a very nice back stitch, but it's a back stitch, so. Alright, we are very nearly done with this dress. I have a few more stitches on this, or to attach the skirt to the bodice, and we'll be done. I think. I keep thinking that there's something I'm forgetting, but I can't remember what it is. Wait, do I not have a thread attached to this? I do have it. Where did I need to put my needle? Oh, I lost the needle. Great. 
I'm sure I'll find it in my feet sometime. I'm gonna get a new one. I already got a new needle. So yeah, there's, I keep feeling like I'm forgetting something, but I don't think I am. Alright, there we go. I have a new 1830s dress now. So I suppose the next step is to put on all my underpinnings and so, so that we can try this on. All right, hello, we are ready to try on the dress. So I got it done for the event, it was last weekend, so I'm excited I got it done. I do not have a neckerchief with me right now, so we're just gonna wear it without. Um, it's somewhere in the mass of things that I partially unpacked, but aren't really unpacked. They're just sitting in the guest room right now, so I can't really find anything. I'm pretty sure most of what I'm wearing today is coming out on the channel, but not quite out yet. So I think the petty, or the corset is out. The chemise should be coming out next month. So this is the reproduction based on the uh, original shift that I have. And then the petticoats and pockets, I think, come out next week. I have to look. But here we go. And I'm suddenly remembering again that I forgot to do the eyes on this side. I remember that from last weekend and then I never actually did them. I will do them later. Last week I just pinned it. Which is probably what I'm going to do right now. I sort of put my hair up in an 1830s working style. It took like three minutes so I didn't do it well but it's done. I'm going to go ahead and pin that shut. So there it is. Super adorable. Uh, big giant poofy sleeves. Uh, that I very well could put sleeve supports in if I wanted to. I didn't last weekend. I only wore it for a couple hours. So I brought, single day event, I brought four dresses. Technically there was five there because Dan Felipe has the fifth dress on display right now. And so um, I only have five 1830s dresses. So they were all there with me. And I wore all but one of them over the weekend. So I only had a couple of hours per dress. Although I did wear the wool one twice because it was cold. So um, I only wore this one partially in the afternoon because it's my coolest dress and I didn't necessarily want a cool dress because it was cold. Okay, it wasn't cold. It was like 60s, or early 70s. It was like, it, it was low 60s in the mornings and it got up to like 82, which to me is cold. So, um, Depends on how you consider cold, but I consider that chilly, so I wore the wool most of the time, and then I traded into this for quite a bit, and then wore another dress for a while because I really because I really felt like wearing that one. You know, this one was probably cooler, but I am very happy with how it turned out. Uh, it's a very nice length. I'll put it down so you can see it a little bit better. There it is. But um, it's just a good working length, and then um, I have little pocket holes that actually fit with my pockets up here somewhere. And it's just it's just a nice dress. I mean, it was nice and cool. It, it's a working class dress, I, but it could be made to a slightly more fashionable dress if I wanted. And all I really have to do to make it a working class or a wealthier class dress is to add sleeve supports. Um, and perhaps like a nice neckerchief or something. So um, I'm overall very happy with it. I'm glad I have another working class dress out of the way. So I have more of a wardrobe for that particular um, impression, which it looks like I might be doing a little bit more of that for San Felipe. I've offered to do both, but um, um, I also kind of like cooking in there. So our cooking is a thing there. And so I might be doing some of that too. And I'm really excited about that. So. Um, yeah, that's basically this dress. It turned out super cute. I'm very happy. Um, the dress worked out really well. Here comes the dogs. I start talking and they think I'm here for them, which I'm not, unfortunately. But um, overall, the dress worked out really well. It was super comfortable. I didn't do much except for sewing and talking and 
That's basically all I do at events is sewing and talking. Sometimes I cook, but often it's just me just chatting with people. So um, that was fun. It was really enjoyable. This dress worked really well. This dress worked really well for that. You know, work really well for cooking and whatever else I decide to do, gardening or anything else. This would be a really nice dress. What I really like about this type, here goes the dog again because it's not tight in here, is this is really easy to kind of push up. Now the Gigo sleeves can still do this, in fact they stay a little bit better, whereas this will, you know, fall down because there's nothing really to hold it up. The Gigo sleeve will actually hold itself up in that position, which I wonder if that's why it was so popular for working class because it just, this whole part will fit under the poof and you just have like a little poof and it's super adorable and you have your arms free and it's just great. So, I really do wonder about that sometimes, but for what it is, I'm thrilled with it. I am very happy we got it done. Something else that's out of the project pile, and I gotta find space for it in the costume closet now. Um, running out of space in there. I have another working class style dress to wear for a San Felipe and whatever else I decide to do for the 1830. So, very nice serviceable dress that, um, yeah. Very nice serviceable dress, which is what I needed. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you. And as always, have a fantastic week, and I will see you back here on Monday.